Hey everybody, welcome to tonight's uh, Wednesday Night Bible Study. Thank you guys for tuning in uh, and uh, being back with us uh, uh, tonight. I miss uh, doing this live, and so maybe in the next few weeks we'll start doing something a little different, try to do it live, but uh, but I do appreciate you guys, and um, I hope that this is uh, beneficial. I hope it's um, encouraging to you as we open up God's Word uh, together. And uh, anyway, I uh, miss you guys. Love just being able to share and uh, spend time uh, in God's Word. And so I hope you're ready for that uh, today. Uh, go ahead and turn your Bibles to Matthew. We're going to be back in the, uh, uh, into Matthew chapter 5. We talk about the Beatitudes. I took a break last week. Sorry about that. Uh, we're back again this week to continue on uh, looking at uh, Matthew chapter 5, walking through the Beatitudes. So again, Matthew 5. Uh, we're going to be uh, in verse 6 today. Uh, I want to read all the way back through that and, and get to verse 6. Uh, but first, let's pray and get ready for what God has for us today. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for uh, what's found in your word. It's just truth, and we thank you for that. Our prayer is that you would just speak to us uh, tonight and that we would just be encouraged by, uh, by you and uh, by your word, and it may it transform us. Holy Spirit, work and move in us uh, as we uh, as we seek out um, who you are in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right, so uh, let's read first, and then we'll come back and kind of walk through uh, some of this. So Matthew chapter five, starting in verse one, it says, "Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, uh, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted." Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And then in verse 6, it says this, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Uh, as we talked earlier uh, in the weeks previous, we talked about how this is the, the Sermon on the Mount, how incredibly impactful and powerful and counterculture it was as Jesus was teaching these words, first to his disciples, but others obviously came and, and listened. And why wouldn't you? I mean, this was so um, different than anything they had ever heard before. Uh, and so here's Jesus teaching these words that are just mind-blowing. And then he gets really taught, begins with the Beatitudes, and he talks about the Beatitudes. Now, what's interesting about the Beatitudes, once again, is that it's not like a set of rules that we follow. It's not like the Ten Commandments, uh, but it really is talking about life change. It's talking about from the inside out what Jesus does on the inside of us. It should change how we live our life. So it's really a uh, it's it's an attitude change for us. It's not a set of rules to follow, but an attitude change that adjusts how we how we live. So we talk through. Um, the uh, the first few beatitudes in the weeks uh, before this, and we come to uh, verse six. Now, here's what's interesting about uh, where we've been and, and where we're going. And um, you know, I, I've heard it said before that uh, the beatitudes can be broken down uh, into a very simple uh, kind of uh, diagram. In in this, this it's roots, life, and fruit pattern. If you look at these. Uh, these Beatitudes, and I'd never thought about that before, but it, it really does seem to be like that. Root uh, is really a, the, the Beatitudes that we've already talked about uh, as we look at um, uh, you know, the awareness of, of our need and the deep longing with, with where we are at and the sin and, and, uh, and how that is uh, devastating to, to God. And so really, it, it, the first few of these that we've read and talked about have talked about uh, just how needy we are for, for God, that we're in desperate need of Him because of the sin that's in our life. And so, so if you look at that, roots, life, and fruit, the root of it uh, is the, the problem that we have, the issues that we have. But the very basic understanding of this life change is coming to the realization of, of our uh, inadequacy, is, is really coming to the realization of our bank bankruptcy, that we, we are definitely uh, morally bankrupt and in need of Jesus. And that's where we find ourselves. That's the very root of everything. And that should be the very root of, of our, our faith, obviously, in that we find ourselves sinful and in desperate need 
of salvation. And that should be where it starts. And that's what the Beatitudes are. We, we just recognize where we're at. Then it goes to life, where we're going to talk about now. And that's really growing in our relationship with the Lord. It's really pursuing Him, passionately pursuing righteousness in Him, as we'll talk about in just a little bit. And then fruit, uh, which is uh, how we live out um, our faith. And so it really can be broken down into that. And I think it's very interesting. So now here we are in verse 6. As we talk about the next beatitude, which is really life uh, and how we are to, to live. And it just simply says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Now, Martin Lloyd-Jones took a, a very interesting uh, thought on this, on this passage, which I, I think is right spot on. He said this, he says, If this verse is to you one of the most blessed statements of the whole of Scripture, you can be quite certain you are a Christian. If it is not, then you had better examine the foundations again. That's very interesting. And uh, as we think about this passage, if this is if this is something that uh, is is really uh, really one of the more blessed scriptures for you, really means a lot. Listen, you can be sure of your salvation because this should really spark something in you as we talk about this hungering and thirst for righteousness. Uh, that will be full, that should really excite you uh, as a believer. If it doesn't, then there's something wrong with that. I mean, we should be uh, always uh, excited about the filling of the Holy Spirit in our life and how Jesus fills us up. And so this is a very important verse. It's a very practical verse for us as we talk about our life in Jesus and uh, and, and really um, this life change that we have in our relationship with, with Him. So last Sunday, I don't know if you uh, remember, um, no, actually it wasn't last Sunday, I'm sorry. It was one of the 10 at 10s, I believe. No, it was last Sunday. Um, I'm confused. The days kind of blend in with this whole Corona thing. But last Sunday, you're in the invitation. Uh, in the second service, um, I talked about uh, how when I was growing up, uh, the statement was always made, you are what you eat. We saw that all over the place. Really talking about health and fitness and things like that. Uh, which was interesting. You are what you eat, which probably really would have meant that when I was in college, I would have been a Taco Bell burrito. I mean, that's really what I would have turned into. Uh, I know that's hard to believe, uh, but yeah. Anyway, so you are what you eat was, was said uh, a lot about our life and things like that. So now think about that spiritually. Uh, it really applies to this where it says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness uh, and, and apply that whole thought. You are what you eat. You are what you consume. And so when we talk about this hunger and thirst for righteousness, it really comes into play about what we are consuming and allowing to consume us, what we are, uh, how we are practicing living out our faith is, is essential. And so let's talk about this a little bit as we um, move through the Beatitudes in this section. Let's first just say this. So what are we talking about here with righteousness? And, and this is important to clarify. Um, a couple of uh, sermons ago, I think, I believe, on Sunday I talked about uh, righteousness and things like that, and that there's really two different kinds of righteousness. And one is imputed righteousness, which, which comes through the sacrifice that Jesus has made for us. God gives us this righteousness that we are found and made holy in Him. So righteousness literally means being right with God. That's what it means. And so we have this imputed righteousness, which means God has given us this righteousness through Jesus when we, as we have a relationship uh, with Him, which that can never be taken away. And that's a powerful truth that we live by as, as a believer that uh, Jesus died for our sin, that in Him we, we have life, we have forgiveness of sin. Matter of fact, 2 Corinthians in chapter 5 says this, For our sake He made Him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. Um, so we have this imputed righteousness. Now, I just want to say that first and foremost, that that's the very foundation of our faith and that we are to stand strong on that, that that's not something that we have earned. This is something God has given us. But there is an imparted kind of righteousness. This comes through the power of the Holy Spirit uh, of us pursuing after the Lord and, and us being made uh, holy and, set and changed throughout our life, this sanctification process of us changing as we live out our faith. So this is important because uh, we, we recognize that we cannot save ourselves, that we cannot be righteous, righteous on our own. That is done through Jesus, but 
We are to live for Him and be obedient, and He will change us and make us more and more like Him daily. So that is the righteousness, and I believe that's really the righteousness that is talked about here, the hunger and thirst for righteousness. This is the beauty of being a believer. Uh, the beauty of being a believer is, uh, and, and a paradox, or whatever you may want to call it, is that we are filled with Jesus when we accept Him into our life, made righteous, but it should cause us to want more and more and more of Him. And so we grow and grow and grow in Him. So we, we have this uh, fullness, but we are made full every single day, which is an incredible truth that we have as, as Christians. So I believe this is not negating either or. It's saying both, but, but really it's talking about as believers, we have this righteousness through Jesus, but it should spur us on in passion to grow more and more like Him, to have a desire to be more set apart, to be more like Jesus in how we live out our faith. So when it talks about hunger and thirst for righteousness, it is saying that. It is saying that we should have this passion to live differently, to be different, to live for Jesus. So think about that for a second, hunger and thirst. Now, this is not something that just... Um, you know, it's not some passing thing about uh, this the idea of hunger. It's so much deeper than that. Hunger uh, is is intense. You know, you think about hunger and, and thirst. It, it, those are necessities. It's necessary for us to eat and to drink. We can do without some things, but uh, what we eat and drink is a necessity. And so when it talks about hungering, this is an intense, more than just a superficial emotion. This is a, a deep-seated need uh, that we have and should have in our life. We hunger and thirst, uh, but we hunger and thirst for righteousness. We should hunger and thirst for what is of Jesus. We should hunger and thirst for who He is and for Him in our life. So this is a deep-seated uh, a need, intense desire that we should have in our life. Uh, in Psalm, it talks about this. David talked about it a lot. In Psalm 42, it says, As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. In Psalm 63, O God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Can you can you uh, sense the desperation for more of God? That's what this means, to hunger and thirst for more of God, to, to hunger and thirst for more of who He is in our life, to be filled with Him more and more and more. Uh, we, that, that is an intense desire that we have in our life. I, I was thinking of, of hunger and kind of just reading through uh, some, uh, some notes and some uh, commentaries, and some of the things that uh, it related back to was just hunger. And I thought that's a very interesting concept uh, that, that's being talked about here in relating that to our desire and passion for more of Jesus. Think about hunger. Uh, one, when you're hungry, when you have hunger, it means that there's a need. Listen, we need Jesus. We need more of Him every day. And that is so true as a Christian. Uh, we, we can't say we've arrived ever. Uh, we are. We've never arrived. We are. We are constantly in need of more of Him, um, and and I think we need to be aware of that. It's an awareness of this need, but also hunger is a sign that we're still living. It's life. Uh, we desperately need that, and so uh, if we're hungry, that means that we uh, that God is is still working and changing and moving in us. Um, so we we desire that. Uh, then then we should be thankful for that. Thankful that we're still living and and that we desperately need uh, need Jesus um, but also uh, is a sign of health for a Christian if we're hungry that means we desire to eat listen there's a lot of sickness in the world today and and sometimes you get sick and you know for this COVID-19 they say uh, some of it is you lose your taste for food I, I can't even imagine what that would be like how torturous is that but but listen when you're sick you don't want to eat right and so what sin does in your life uh, it fills you up with sin and it makes you sick and you don't have a hunger for God. Uh, it takes away that hunger for Him and thirst for Him. So if you're hungry uh, for anything means signs of health, but especially spiritually, if you're hungry, hungry for righteousness in God, it means that uh, you're you're walking in, in in with the Lord, and there's some health, spiritual health there. So so that's pretty powerful and pretty important. So I just want to encourage you in that. Are you hungry? Uh, in that way, thirsty for uh, for more of Jesus in your life. That is a good place to be, and it's something that we should always be in, uh, that we uh, will do that. 
And so it says, blessed are those, happy are those, really it's more deeper than that, that uh, who hunger and thirst for righteousness. What does it say? For they shall be satisfied. So when we hunger for God, when we desire more of Him, listen, God is faithful. Um, he's going to fill us up with what we need. Uh, he's going to fill us up with everything that we need in our life. And we're going to be full of Him. And that's going to be something that we pursue passionately every day. We want to be filled with Him daily. Uh, the problem is, is why, you know, as, as believers, why do we not experience this every day? Is because we, we thirst and hunger for things of the world. So there are other things that we have thirst and hunger for, and it fills us up, but it doesn't satisfy. Only Jesus satisfies. And, and so that's the biggest difference there. And, and so are you hunger, hungering and thirsting after Jesus? And, and can you, uh, are you really experiencing uh, who He is? And, and so what does that mean for us? As we think about the power of this hunger, this thirst in our life after righteousness, uh, what, what do we need to take away from, from that? And I, I guess just really asking the question of, of this. Um, do, you, uh, do you seek this righteousness above anything else in your life? Do you seek to be different in your life, to be set apart, to be filled with Jesus more than anything else in your life? And that really sets it apart. To be fully satisfied in Jesus, to be fully satisfied is to hunger and thirst and more than for Him more than anything else in the world. And so uh, I guess that's a, a question that we have to uh, ask uh, ourselves. The problem with sin in the world is that it, uh, it fills us with the wrong thing. It really does. It fills us with the wrong thing. And, and in a sense, we lose our appetite for God. And, and, and maybe today you have lost your appetite for God. Can I just say it's not too late? It's not too late to uh, gain that hunger for righteousness and hunger for and thirst for uh, righteousness. And first, you've got to identify. Identify the things in your life that, that's filling you up, that's keeping you from God. And, and, re, and you'll reprioritize what's important. And that's something we all have to do as believers every day, to reprioritize what we're allowing to fill us up, fill our minds and hearts and everything up. And are we hungering after God or are we hungering after the world? And, and so it's going to be a, um, a heart examination, really, is what it is. We're examining our heart and deciding what is really um, filling us up. And is there something that, uh, that is causing us to uh, starve? And, 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 you know, spiritually, because that's what happens. Sin causes us to kind of starve spiritually. And when that happens, there's no health. There's no blessing. There's no joy. There's no peace because we're starving. Um, and so the thing about hunger is you want to fill that hunger. You have to fill that hunger. And, and spiritually, we have to fill that with Jesus. Uh, there's nothing else that's going to fill us up. And so I just want to encourage you with that. So that's not a lot, uh, you know, long study today, but I do want to just encourage you with this. Examine your heart. Are you hungering and thirsting after God? Do you want more of Him daily? And if not, if He's not filling you up, then find what's filling you up and reprioritize your life. And, and listen, we have to be passionate about being righteous, okay, about being right. Um, it doesn't save you. Please don't hear that. It doesn't save you, but man, it does fill you when you pursue after God and live for Him and obediently follow Him. Uh, the only way we're truly going to be satisfied daily uh, is through pursuing uh, righteousness, pursuing right living with God. And so I want to encourage you. What's your passion? Um, are you passionately filling your life with Jesus? Are you passionately filling your life with other things? So, so this is the, uh, what Jesus is talking about. So blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They have a desire to be more like, like God. They have a desire to live and be more like Him, set apart and, and holy. Uh, because those people that do that, they're satisfied. And we all want to be satisfied. All right. Well, thanks, you guys. Uh, that's a short but sweet, and, uh, and I hope that's encouraging to you, and I hope that you're pursuing righteousness, uh, all of us, in, in the same way. So thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I do want to encourage you to check out the email with the prayer bulletin. 
You should be getting that from the church. If not, call the church or go online, hamptonfbc.org, and you can go on our online button and find Wednesday Night Bible Studies, and you can pull that up uh, and get all the information to, about our prayer bulletin and things like that. So, hey, be staying tuned. Uh, we're going to be hopefully changing some things uh, coming up. I'd love to go live on Wednesdays again, maybe start our Zoom back up, but we'll, we'll get that going soon. Uh, but just know this, we love you. We're praying for you. I hope you are praying for us daily. We need it. And uh, church, we miss you. If you haven't had a chance uh, to uh, come and worship with us on Sunday here in person, uh, know that we are uh, we miss you and we love you, but we understand. And so we're, gonna, we're in this together. So keep worshiping online until you feel comfortable coming. Uh, if you are coming, uh, then you know, we're thankful for that. And uh, so come and worship with us. It's going to be a great Sunday this Sunday. So once again, thank you guys. Let me pray for you and then we'll be done. So Father, once again, thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Uh, may we hunger and thirst after righteousness, your righteousness, not our own, but yours. May we live for you every day and may you fill us up. Father, we're tired of the world uh, trying to fill us up. We want to be filled up on you uh, because when we do that, everything changes. Our mindset, our, our uh, confidence, our self worth everything changes in us when we are filled with you and so i pray that you fill us up and that we obediently and passionately follow you as we hunger and thirst for righteousness for being right being uh, living pure and holy uh, for you god so may you give us the strength to do that and may you be honored in all that we do it's all about you may we live uh, live out our faith for all to see you we love you in jesus name we pray amen thanks you guys god bless you and we will talk to you soon and remember this, no matter where you find yourself uh, tomorrow, know that God has placed you there for a purpose. So shine bright for Him and be His missionary. God bless you guys.